back with another video. So uh, that begs the usual question, and the question I used to always ask is, what are we doing today? Well, my channel has taken a bit of a deviation in recent times um, to like Argos and Land Rovers and all sorts of stuff. But um, I'm down with gout, which happens from time to time when things get stressful. So we're back to some desk stuff. So today I'm dealing with uh, some old projects. This is an old camera system that I used to use when I had big problems with people trespassing in the middle of the night. There's a roller cable attached to it as well. Um, I've since got better cameras and uh, I don't cover a lot of the surveillance stuff that I do or have done in the past. Um, largely because it's usually up to security measures and I don't like to make that public. But this little guy was a junction box that... Uh, was grabbing um, good facially recognizable images and number plate images from people that were sneaking across my property. It's no longer necessary, but uh, it is an interesting little design. Rather than open it up, I'll show you loosely what's inside. Now it starts off with a Raspberry Pi 0W here. It's a very cheap board. It's the smaller cousin to the full blown Raspberry Pi of which I have several of these. This one is a version 2, but they're up to a better version 4. I've got lots of these. Um, I have them laying around in literally all their different iterations and forms and laser cut boxes. Uh, very handy little single board computers. Um, I also added a camera module to it. Uh, one of these camera modules. This is the more advanced one with the adjustable zoom lens and the infrared illuminators. Um, it's an interesting project that I've always wanted to advance a little bit more. So for something to keep me busy while I'm here, I found myself a little um, DC to DC converter, and I'm going to use that. Um, this unit has a heatsink on here that's painted black, and it's deliberately sort of um, distressed to make it look just like a junction box. Um, this one here uh basically has an LM7805 regulator in here which is quite wasteful and produces a lot of heat which you can probably tell from the um, depression in this uh, 3D printed case it sort of melted a bit so these things run fairly cool and a lot more efficient and I have a big giant junction box with a bit more room to put stuff in here so I'm hoping with this that I can do some more smarts like maybe some number plate recognition where it trips a relay or it can recognize an object like a cat or maybe I might be pushing this Raspberry Pi a bit too hard but um, you know maybe I can have it recognize a QR code or something I don't know it'll be an experiment something I can play around with um, I do still have the occasional problem with somebody sneaking across the property but uh, I think I'm just gonna put a motion sensing light at the other end of the property and that might cure that it certainly cured it at the other end that and the 16 cameras that are on the house but um, at least it's got quiet around my place I can't say the rest for the rest of the street but um, yeah people have certainly got the message anyway let's see what we can do with this box now normally with a build like this I would uh, start from the other end I would plan everything out and I would do all my programming and I'd get the prototype tested Oh, I started yawning at that thought. But in this case, uh, because I've got most of the programming already done in this little box, I'm going to rip the SD card out of this, run an image on it, and chuck the, a copy of that on this and just change the IPs and the name and like the, um, the device name and all that sort of stuff so that I can run them on the same network. All right, this box has been in my shed for quite some time. The bloke that donated it to me, along with a lot of other stuff, is no longer with us. Um, unfortunately, it seems to be a lot of the stuff in my shed has come from people that are no longer with us. Now, I also noticed there's some little light sensors on these things. I may have to lift them off the board and move them a bit further forward if I intend to use these. This originally came with little screws to attach this and uh, me not finding that screw packet ended up soldering them on. So I might actually just unsolder these bits off the side here and mount them separately. I don't know yet. Anyway, these boxes are good. They're weatherproof. They've got a little seal and everything on them. 
works really well although I find that the pressure differential over in the sun with these tends to create a negative pressure and suck water into them so I do tend to create a little vent hole and I put a little piece of vinyl tube on it a bit like a breather or literally a breather so in this I'm going to work out where I want to mount everything and uh, I might drill some holes and get some stuff loosely positioned and we'll see how it goes from there but um yeah, it could be interesting how this appears with the holes through it. I do have some infrared sensors that look a bit like that. So um, I could just go with that look. Anyway, I'm going to spend a bit of time with this and see what we can come up with. All right. Now, we're going to drill a hole for the camera to start with. I started with a 4.5mm drill bit. We're going to go in with a step drill. And yes, I'm drilling on my workbench. Because, you know, that's what I do. Although I have a bin right beside me to throw all these bits in. Um, I'm going to have to come up the size. What was that size? That was, I believe, 10 mil. So we'll go up to 12. I'll just go up a size till it fits. That is very nearly perfect size. So I'll just sink that through a little bit more. That's probably perfect. So we can probably get a nice tight seal, which the walrus will be happy about from this side. I think I am going to disconnect these because they don't sit flush the way I want them to. And uh, I might bring those light sensors forward just a little bit. Um, which they're LDRs, the light dependent resistors. Alright, get our swarf out of the way and uh, let's make a few steps off camera. This is a job for relaxation, not so much for videoing, so I'm going to skip a few, few bits and go a little bit out of my normal, um, let's say, profile here, my normal script. I don't know what the word for that is. Anyway, let's uh, keep going. Alright, so I decided I'm going to do some soldering here, which involved me turning on some fancy lights in the background. And turning on my solder station if that has turned on sometimes that relay doesn't quite work right and I have to reset it I've heard it click that time that'll be good now while our soldering iron is warming up we're going to undo some of the hard work that I did here and so that we don't damage this ribbon cable which also has to change sizes because of the size of the ribbon cable connector and the zero w is narrower than the rest of the full size boards look at this stuck down to some blue tech and we will reheat these joins and hopefully it just lifts off hopefully all right um i might need a desoldering tool and i have one right here all right i'll be back when the soldering iron's hot all right i'm gonna guess my soldering iron's probably fairly hot I'm going to grab some solder. That's a new roll. Here's my not new roll. All right. So if we go, let's get some extraction fan happening here, which sounds a bit funky because I bumped into it the other day and lost a fin. All right. Let's see if I can undo my solder joins, which may be met with mixed results. A little bit considering how I flowed them in originally. Oh, this is going to be interesting. I may end up just leaving them on there. Oh, bit of fresh solder here. Ah, uh, we'll get there. This is going to be long and tedious, so we'll be back. All right, so I got them off the side of the camera, and I was a little bit forceful with the first one, and I actually ripped one of the pads off the board not the end of the world I don't think because I'm pretty sure this just carries 5 volts from the system bus up here and uh, so I'm pretty sure I can just connect these direct to 5 volts and they'll function I'll test that later but anyway ripping that pad off is not going to affect the camera function at all so uh, in fact I think I see a track going straight to the outside pin on that which I'm pretty sure is the 5 volt rail um, I'm pretty sure on this you've got um, shielding on one side, I'm pretty sure you've got 
5 volt up one side and ground up the other. I think that's how that works. Um, I've got little bits of lead solder in my blue tack, which I like to pick out and get out of the way. Alright, let's get this mounted in the lid. Alright, so I've got things partly mounted on the front here. I've got my two little infrared lenses and I messed up with a hole drill here, so it's a little bit wonky. I've got things hot glued down because I want to be able to remove them. Now, I haven't had a chance to check the focus, but the way I've done this is I can adjust the focus by physically twisting the actual camera module. And if I need, leave enough slack on this, it'll deal with being at a funny angle slightly. So I can still adjust focus from the inside without too much of a problem. And I can actually still remove that module. Um, how well this hot glue will hold in in the hot weather, I don't know. These little LED modules do thankfully just pop right off, so I can pop them back onto these lenses like that. No worries. It also makes it much easier to get to this um, LDR in here, which I'm going to rip off the board, and uh, we will poke through a hole on the front as well. But that gives you some progress as to where we're up to with this. And this is going to be set up more trail cam style than active surveillance. It's just basically going to be to grab still images of things that move. And yes, I still have problems with cats in my yard. Despite the fact that somebody reckoned I copied Turner 81 with my cat sprayer years ago. Well, it turns out he had the same idea as I did and I didn't know he existed until somebody pointed him out. But uh, anyway, this might be handy for similar projects. I guess uh, great minds think alike. Anyway, all right, uh, let's carry on. All right, for this little bit, we're going to show you how I get the LDRs out, and this is a nifty little trick. We're going to do our extraction fan here. I'm going to take our soldering iron tip here and tin it just a little bit. And um, we might actually get a little bit of, this is flux core solder, so get a bit of flux in there. Basically, I've got the bottom half of this stuck into blue tack. Come on, active focus, stick on the job. Um, so I'm going to heat both these legs at the same time and gently lift off while the component stays stuck below. That's as quick as it is to get a through hole component out. There's our LDR and from here we're going to get our desoldering tool and we're going to clear this off a little bit. Try and clear these holes out. Not that it really matters in my case because I'm going to mount this off board um, I may need just a little bit of extra fresh solder here just to get that one liquid. Close enough anyway. I'm going to uh, tack a couple of wires onto that and then run them off elsewhere. Alright. Well there is actually a positive indicator on that LDR. I didn't know LDRs were polarised. I guess we'll find out if they are. This is a little rubber housing that I can pull this out of. So uh, I might pull it out of the rubber housing and inspect. But I don't think it's polarized. There isn't any indication of that there. All right, let's continue on. All right, I have made some progression. So I have my LDRs mounted on the front, a little bit of a distance away. And I noticed that these actually have like a little protective lens inside this rubber um, seal, which I need to push back down a bit. That one's come out of position slightly. We'll push that back in in a minute. Um, but that obviously helps with the waterproofing ability. And so I've connected them to some extended cables back to the, the unit. I am reasonably sure that LDRs are not polarized, but uh, I've done them to the same polarity anyway. I left a good length of cable here, so I've still got room to adjust my focus a little bit. Um, with the wires connecting to the power section, I'm pretty sure that's the orientation they should be. We'll find out when they don't work. They're LEDs after all. And this one is slightly misaligned, um, but that's not going to be the end of the, wire, end of the world. Um, so yeah, the rest I've just got to get the power supply and the Raspberry Pi in here. We might almost be at a point where we can test this and see how we go. Anyway, I want to get these lenses in the top sorted out first. Alright, let's carry on. Alright, we've made a little bit of progress. I have my regulator or DC to DC converter that's good for 15 watts. Has been um, 
attached directly to the GPIO pins of this. So I'm trusting this thing's regulation quite a lot. Um, and that's straight into um, pin one, which I think is five volt DC and pin six, no, sorry, pin two, which is five volt and pin six, which is ground. I should share the grounds with everything else. There's two five volt DC powers, but I'm pretty sure they are in parallel. Uh, either way, I have done this trick before and it works very well. Another thing I have added is a bridge rectifier. So even though I'm feeding DC in, if I happen to get my DC backwards, it's not going to screw anything up. And uh, there is about a half volt or a one volt drop through these. Not the end of the world considering I'm going to be feeding 12 volt in here. And this DC to DC converter will handle quite a wide variety of input voltages. But um, we're nearing completion. The SD card slot is very accessible as are all the other ports that I may or may not need to get to. So I can take the lid off the box and get onto these. It is held on with a little bit of hot glue, but knowing how hot these things often get, especially in an enclosed box, that may come off. So this cable should still keep it pushed up against that box. If it doesn't, I can still fit a heat sink or a mechanical clamp or something. We'll see how it goes in the future. So all I need to do now is find myself some sort of DC socket and uh, a couple of bits of wire. And I will look at the um, breather tube later on. Not just yet. All right. Um, anyway, let's go and find our bits and bobs and see if we can get this tested. All right. So we're mostly done, at least on the hardware side. So this is another hot glue special, as you've probably figured out. We have room still to twist and adjust the focus. We can probably almost get a full turn out of that. Regulator and bridge rectifier all held down with hot glue. Um, as is the cables, they've all pinned down. I was going to put a nice fancy socket on this, but with a lot of stuff that I'm doing, um, I'm going to need to connect directly to a cable. It's also the noisy time of night in here, so you'll probably hear some laughing and my apprentice and whatnot in the background, so you'll have to deal with that. Um, but in any case, with these being what they are, I'm connecting to um, cables I've got in the field, which I always forget whether it's the trace wire or the uh, non-trace wire that I use for negative. So, um, and there's a lot of different variations. So this, I can pretty well just hook it up to sort of anything from about nine to 15 volts, regardless of the polarity now, and it'll figure everything out in here. And uh, worst case, if I over voltage it, this bit will tend to blow up without damaging that bit. So, I better check that the other back of the box fits on. It does with loads of room, so we can give a bit of air circulation going on. I intend to mount it in this orientation, so that there is a little bit of slack around here, so if there's any pressure variation, it should pump that water out through that hole. I will add a vent or a breather tube later on. But it means this can fill up to a significant level before it starts to get to the circuit board, um, saving it from some of the water. And this is also in a sealed um, potted component. So it should resist the water fairly well. Um, when I put this seal on, I will be also putting the gap for the seal at the bottom here too, just to help it actually pump a bit of water out. The other thing I can do for a breather um, it's a bit more discreet than I have done before is I can drill a hole through here into the little screw cavity here which um, on the top of the lid is actually a clear access way all the way through and it can pump some of the water out but it does require it to sit at that top level you can go in from the side here but it's not as reliable um, so yeah anyway I'm going to uh, clone the SD card off my old project and uh, see if we can get it happening on this one. Uh, one, little... one other little detail I noticed is I think I have cracked one of the glass lenses in the top of this. I did try and push it down a little bit, um, but I think I'm just going to put a few drops of super glue in there. And that should be optically suitable to deal with a bit of uh, a bit of light change, even though these LDRs are pretty well sealed um, with a bit of resin anyway. This should probably help. I'm going to do it to both of them. Why not? All right, and that should, when it sets, hold them in and provide a bit of a waterproof seal on it as well. All right, let's go clone this program. 
All right, while we're at it, I'm going to uh, give you a bit of an, uh, a bit of a look at what's inside this one. It's also now at a time of night where I can't get a screwdriver straight to save me life. So you're going to deal with me being a little bit wobbly with a screwdriver. Now this one, I actually went to the trouble when I 3D printed this to actually put uh, threaded inserts in the plastic. So see here, here's my regulator all held on with foil tape and uh, my bridge rectifier that's in this one. Here's my high-tech, uh, really super expensive insulator. And uh, in the back here is the Pi Zero W and behind that is a camera module. Now that is the visible spectrum camera module in this one. The one we're building uses the infrared camera module. There's our 16 gig SD card which means I'm going to have to image the full 16 gig. But luckily I have storage to back all that up. Let's go make a disk image of that. Alright, so while we wait for that disk image to run, which reckons it's going to take about another 12 minutes, it's doing 21 megaseconds, so it's going to take a little while. We're going to take this section off, and we're going to fit the rubber seal into this. What well, sort of a rubber seal, it's some sort of extruded compoundy thing that I can never get out, so I just rip the top off. I, the dexterity I have these days makes it practically impossible for well, now it's going to work to get these little things open. Um, that and all the hand sanitizer I have to use every time I go into a place, which I don't really disagree with using hand sanitizer, but it is a bit of a pain. Anyway, we're going to just work this guy in here. This stuff is actually kind of interesting. It's got sort of a weird sort of rough texture to it. It does make it a little bit hard to insert I think it's probably an extruded foam of some kind. I really should look into it. But uh, we're going to work this all the way around. This will compress and deform into this slot after the first fitting pretty well. I always give you a bit more than you need. So that results in having to trim it. Um, as I said before, I'm putting the join at the bottom quite strategically. Um, Normally you would overlap these to get a complete seal, but I'm relying on that little bit of a gap there to actually help keep it a little bit. Um, actually, you know what, I will overlap that because I'm going to drill a breather hole later on. So we're going to just flush cut that right about there. We're going to put our box lid on and we are going to push from this side so I don't further damage those little glass things which I might have to put another blob of glue on. Alright, I'll give that a push in, and that should seat itself in there very nicely. Alright, and from here we have threaded inserts on this side. So these screws all go in from this side, and they are, they do partially retain themselves. So when you thread these in, they do cut a little bit of a thread through here, but they don't fall out. Just got my finger over here so I can feel when it's starting to come through. There we go. Right, so they won't, they'll rattle around a bit, but they won't fall out. So I can have these semi-captive, which would be nice. Right, I'll finish the rest of these, and hopefully our disc image will be done. Oh, we're about four minutes in now. All right, so um, we're going to shut a few things down here. Um, I've got this propped up so it doesn't glue itself to the bench again because apparently super glue in the low humidity of my workshop at the moment is not setting fast. Anyway, I haven't got the SD card in. The read has just been successful. I'm still going to have to write a new card. But what we're going to do, we have temporarily connected to my vault panel up here and we're going to feed 12 volts to it and see what happens. And, um... Nothing appears to have blown up yet. Nothing's had a major heart attack and I don't see any lights on with anything either. So that means I probably haven't got a good connection here. So, and I'm seeing it's like 11.8 volts. There's a bit of current being drawn and it goes from my volt meter, my current meter up here, which is running LEDs goes from that to 0.8 volts. So about 200 milliamps is what we would expect. I wouldn't expect to see any lights on this just yet, but I'm going to have to probe for some power somewhere and see if anything is actually lighting up anywhere. Um, 
I can probably probe off the back of this. Let me get my meter. Alright, I've got my cheapy little meter here, which if I can prop this up will give us an indication as to what's going on. Okay, that prop didn't work very well. I'll just have to tell you what it's saying. So let's prop off this, turn on our power. Do we have voltage? So I've got 11.7 volts coming in, which is about close to what I would expect to be seeing there. If I unplug that, we come back to 12.2. So that is, uh, might have just been a dodgy connection. We've got 11.65. That really tells me there's like some sort of dead short somewhere. Or oh, these infrared LEDs are lighting up. Let me turn off all my workshop lights and see what happens. All right, so this is, yeah, that's what I thought. This camera is infrared sensitive. All right, and we are seeing a similar current drain. So I'm glad I got those lights on the right way. I was a bit worried about that. Let's grab a little light here and shine it at these and see if they turn off. That one turns off. In fact, I can see these with my eyes turning on and off with those. So that is good. All right, so we know our infrared lights work. That indicates a whole bunch of really handy things for us. So that's good. Let's turn our lights back on. These guys are still on, probably because there's not enough, not enough light intensity to turn them off. That's okay. But that side of it, I'm really happy works because that was the hard bit to do. Not really hard, but it's a pain in the ass to undo. All right, let's uh, see what else we can get happening. All right, so while we're waiting for the new SD card to write, um, we're going to put the old one back in here. Now that I've done this, I have a disk image, so I can make endless clones of that setup as needed. Or I can, if I kill an SD card or this whole thing gets destroyed, I can come back to it at a later date and revise my designs. But I'll forget my high-tech insulator there. Right. But yeah, this is definitely a cold weather camera, this one. This one actually spent a couple of years in the field, and I'm actually quite surprised with how um, PLA, 3D printed PLA, held up in the weather. It worked quite well. There is a bit of blue tack on that screw, because that screw is not magnetic, like the other three. And, um, yeah... This was made out of bits and bobs and what I had at the time. And uh, insulation tape, of course, because that doesn't seal up properly anymore. But uh, this will probably get used again in a sheltered spot or somewhere where it's useful. There's a guy looking for worksite cameras. Um, and I'm thinking about building some of these into some equipment. Um, part of why I'm building the one I'm building, because it can be passed off with a couple of cable grommets to look like a junction box on a piece of, say, roadworks equipment, for instance. All right, there's our tape back on. Now we can get this big tangle of cable off my desk. Get off, you tangling piece of crap. Right, there. Okay, our desk is clear. Our card reckons it's got another 11 minutes to go. So, we'll come back to you in a minute. All right. Now our other SD card has finished writing. Should be a nice clone of it. Um, now, crucially, this is a 32 gig SD card. So at some point, uh, this will be formatted as a 16 because I've cloned from a 16 gig image. So at some point, I'll get in and expand the root file system. That is going to be considerably easier to do once this is functioning. All right. Is our card in there. I don't remember what the SSH login details are and I don't seem to have made a clear um, record of them so I'm gonna have to guess my way into this. But uh, let's see if we get some lights in here. We do, we've got a flashing green light down in here. That is probably good. So I'm gonna sit here and let this tick away see if it shows up on the network. All right, uh, this might be a little bit hard to see, but it has shown up as a footpath cam, which is pretty much what I named it originally, even though it never ended up getting put on a footpath. But we can see a um, slow refresh rate um, image here. It's usually a few seconds delayed because I set the buffers fairly high. 
um, but we can see that our image is indeed working. If I spin this round to look at the messy part of my desk, um, let's go refresh here and see what we get from this. See if we get a new image out of it. Certainly it is working to some degree. There we go. Now we've got an updated image. It is loading. Um, so yeah, I will certainly change its name and whatnot. But I think hopefully I can log into this and run the um, file system expansion. Uh, the other thing I should be able to do with this um, is access it via the network. Let's have a look here. All right, now we've got it accessed here and I have set it to set the dates and whatnot. Um, this will probably have a couple of images from previous testing on here um, because it is a clone of the old system. Let's have a look at tonight. It should have grabbed a motion capture image here and it detected that a little area here moved, hence the pink circle. Um, we'll go right to the end. It should have detected some more motion here. It didn't quite get the full frame, but that's okay. It is still working and this purple hue here tells me that uh, we're looking at the, um, uh, what are we looking at the infrared spectrum. So that's pretty good. All right, we're gonna turn all our lights off and test that in the dark. All right, I'm gonna let this uh, refresh while I turn off all the lights. And we will turn off all the fancy lights up here and turn this one off and try and take down some of the bright stuff here. Normally this light level would be pretty shocking for a camera like this, but with the illuminators, which I can sort of see slightly lighting stuff up, we should see if we refresh this a better image. Let's see how we go. It should auto refresh every few seconds. But I'm seeing some reflection up the very top here. And it looks like, yes, we're getting good illumination. And the focus is not too bad. And uh, crucially, the orientation of the camera is correct. Even though I've got it laying sideways at the moment. You're looking at my mini museum up here, which if I light up my museum here, um, we should see that change when we next do a refresh on the camera. Okay, let's refresh this and we should see the mini museum lit up. And the sands of Gallipoli quite uh, clearly visible there oh it's okay so the buffer is a little bit behind which is what we we always had in the other one anyway i'm going to try and get onto this with ssh i'm going to expand its storage and then we're going to button the case up we might shove it outside uh within range of the wi-fi on a battery overnight and see what happens all right i managed to guess my way into the ssh console i remembered my password eventually so uh, now we're going to just randomly shut this thing down and we're going to button the case up. I need a little bit of blue tack under here to stop them IR sensors working um, or getting squashed. So we're going to button all this up and uh, we'll stick it outside for the night and uh, see what happens. I dare say the magpies will find it in the morning and uh, probably get suspicious and curious about it as they do. Um, and yeah, I guess we'll probably have some cats too. <laughs> and it probably helps if I do the screws up from the correct side of the case. <laughs> I am not tired at all, and I'm smart. I bet you it is sort of drizzly at the moment. I bet you it'll piss down rain tonight. And uh, like this will be the last thing this thing does. But we'll see what happens. You can only try. I think the focus is pretty good on this, but we'll find out when it's in the field and if I've got to adjust it or not. All right, here's our camera box. Let's go put it outside and we'll see what we get.